Good afternoon, everybody, that I can no longer see because of the lights. Um, my name is Pete Chadwick. Um, I'm here with uh, Arkady Konevsky. We are um, members of the OpenStack Product Working Group. Uh, this is a community effort to help guide, um, especially uh, in the area of cross product, um, to try and define uh, use cases that, that span multiple projects uh, and work with the user community um, to help represent uh, requirements and demands into the, into the overall project. What we wanted to do today was talk about some of the ways that we try to structure the discussion um, with the community and with the, the, technical, uh, the technical committee on, on how we should be addressing um, key objectives in the roadmap. Um, there's a separate session tomorrow that goes into much more detail on the roadmap, but what we were trying to talk about today um, are what we call themes. And I think you heard uh, Jonathan talk a little bit about themes in the, uh, in the kickoff this morning, uh, in the keynote. Uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do is, is explain how we use themes, how they're important, and ideally get feedback from the community as to whether this direction is where we want to go and whether we need to, to add some additional, uh, additional changes. So first of all, um, this is a roadmap discussion. Um, you know, this is a community. Things change rapidly, so um, your mileage may vary and all that sort of thing. So what we want to do was, as I said, we're, we're, we're representing uh, the product working group. I'm not going to introduce all these people, it's a, but it's from a number of different organizations, both um, providers of OpenStack services as well as consumers of OpenStack. Uh, and we meet on a fairly regular basis. We have weekly, bi-weekly calls to talk about where the overall uh, project is going or where the overall OpenStack project is going and, and then focus on specific sub-areas that we think are particularly relevant. There are a number of subgroups on the product working group. For instance, there's a group focused on um, onboarding commercial ISV offerings. There's a group that's focused on uh, specifically enterprise requirements. Um, there's a telco working group that feeds up into this as well. So we're trying to bring forward requirements and concerns from the broader OpenStack community uh, to help guide um, projects, especially when, as I said, there are specific use cases that span multiple projects. So I want to talk about, as I said, themes. So I thought we would start off talking about is, is, is what is the theme, how do we use it, and, and what's, um, why do we think that it's important? So first, um, from our perspective, a theme is a high-level objective. Um, and, and you heard Jonathan talk today about user experience. So the question is, what is it about user experience that we can ask the various technical teams to go focus on uh, to make improvements as we go through um, the various uh, six-month product cycles? Uh, it, it, but it's not really, originally I wrote this and said it's not features. That's not strictly true. It can be a feature, but it's not just features. Um, it, it's not necessarily, like, oh, I want Nova to be able to do X, Y, Z. It's I need to have Nova work with Horizon, work with Glance to deliver this particular capability, and they all need to work in unison with each other to make to make the thing make sense. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, I want to be able to manage um, uh, I may have a use case that says I want to be able to improve the manageability of multi-region uh, clouds, and that's going to impact a number of different projects. And how do we how do we define that? And it's most specifically, it's almost never project specific. Um, again, sometimes it could be very project specific, but usually it's a cross-project um, uh, effect. Because um, you, you think, okay, user experience, well, that's, that's Horizon, right? That's just the dashboard. That's what the user sees, but not really. I mean, it can also be, you know, if a user writes an application that takes advantage of an API, you don't want the, that API to change in the next release and break his application. That would be a bad user experience, even though it has nothing to do with um, uh, the Horizon dashboard per se. So how do we use themes within um, the OpenStack community? So again, it's, it's primarily about, um, about unifying um, a set of efforts and a set of messages that we can deliver to the technical community. And then we can also use that as we go back out to the market, um, to the user community and the market at large to explain what it is what, that, we're, that we are focused on. And the, and the one goal that we're trying to drive is helping prioritize work efforts across projects and across releases. And so you'll see we've got a slide later on that, that Arcadia will go through um, that talks about how we're tracking specific themes, you know, showing how individual projects are addressing those themes, 
but it's a snapshot that's based upon where we are with Mataka. There are efforts that'll go into to Newton, there are efforts that go on to Oka Okada. Um, we really started this back in the, in the Liberty timeframe, so it's still a, a process that's evolving. And the discussion that we want to really go through today is how do we kind of continue to make this relevant to the overall community? which is the, the, the last bullet here. So how do we pick themes? Um, to some extent, we're trying to identify non-feature issues that perhaps are limiting deployment. So for example, if there's, going back to user experience, if someone says, well, I'd deploy this, but every time, you know, every six months an API breaks, I can't, I can't trust this for deploying production workloads because uh, it's just not stable enough for me to do that. That is, a, that is the kind of thing that we could apply a theme to and say we need to stabilize things, we need to make them predictable so customers that can then go uh, deploy them. Um, we try to focus on things which can address multiple different use cases. Um, so it's not just about enterprise, it's not just about public cloud. Uh, we try to focus on things which go across multiple, multiple areas. And so there may be some requirements that the NFV team is coming out driven from the telco working group that aren't necessarily relevant for the enterprise working group and similarly for the, for the public cloud. So we're trying to identify themes which can really span across all of those different use cases. Um, one of the things that we want to do is encourage more direct feedback. So we're hoping, you know, there'll be a quiz at the end of the session where we ask you to tell us what's good and bad about the themes that we've been running against so far and ask, ask for feedback on that. And it can be either, um, you can either feedback directly or you can all, anybody's welcome to join the um, uh, product working group mailing list and provide us feedback that way. And the one thing that we're starting to do now, and this is something that, that Arcadi's been working on, is uh, we've started to work with a team to identify different roles of cloud consumers, whether it be an end user, whether it be an operator, whether it be a cloud architect. We're trying to define the different roles that someone would have um, and, and how we map against those roles as to what needs to be done in uh, uh, in, in OpenStack, and we're starting to map the themes against the roles. So the idea would be to say, you know, obviously if there's a particular theme um, that should be important to all roles, that may be a little bit higher priority. So for example, one of the themes is security. Um, and that's important across every role as far as we can tell. So now you have to, you know, crawl down in there and say, well, what's security mean to an end user versus what security mean to a systems ad administrator? So these were the themes that we used when we talked about the Mataka roadmap. So um, I'd ask for a show of hands, but since I can't see them anyway, it's kind of pointless. Um, but this is what we rolled out with the roadmap in Tokyo when we presented, when we pre presented Mataka there. Um, so you can see, I'm not gonna read through this, you know, the, the, the themes were scalability, resiliency, modularity, um, interoperability, and manageability. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty broad, pretty, pretty uh, uh, straightforward. One of the things that we found as we looked through some of these, that things like manageability, um, we, we had too many things within the single, the single uh, theme. So we split out and said, okay, so manageability really has two parts. There's one section that's really focused on how do I operate the cloud, how do I set up the cloud, how do I maintain the cloud, and there's a separate section which is really about the user experience, whether it's the end user or whether it's the administrator. So one of them was about tools and how do you build tools that make it easy to, to manage the cloud, and the second one was about you know, how do you make sure that everything is working together in a consistent fashion so that the user uh, feels that they've been getting more value out of the, out of the cloud or it's easier uh, for them to consume for their particular organization. So one question, just quickly, do these make, so far, I just wanna take a, does this make sense to everybody? Is this sort of nod? <laughs> um, I mean, this is, this is something that we think is useful. We want to make sure that it's useful for the community uh, in, a, in a way to, to describe things. So we've got a couple new themes that we think we want to bring forward. And again, I think those are something that you're really teasing out of manageability. Obviously, security and stability, um, you know, you want to make sure the cloud's secure so nobody can can hack into you so that you don't have to run the risk that you've got multiple tenants within your cloud that one tenant can see what's going on with another tenant. Um, and then how do you just secure everything within the cloud to make it, to make it robust and stable? And then, then how do I make sure that the, 
that I got more stability, especially in things like APIs. So if my cloud today runs one way, I wanna make sure that the, a month from now, it's gonna run the same way so that I don't end up breaking, breaking applications. So again, we'd love to get feedback on that. Um, we'll run through a couple more discussions and then, and then we can uh, open it for questions. So um, as I said, if you've, if you've got an opinion, if anyone wants to raise their hand and, and say this is terrible, this works well, this is irrelevant, Yes. Uh, are you you're looking for potential new themes in addition to these, or are you sure. looking for specific feedback on? Or do any of these not make sense? So either way. Okay. Well, I'm wondering, you know, if if there's one about continuous deployment. If uh, I think some people are starting <coughs> to want to avoid the the pain of the forklift upgrades by continuously deploying code and then, but the way that the community works um, with, with DevStack and CI, it's always like a fresh install test. Yep. And, and then there's some upgrade testing that goes on, but, um, so it's really more of a question if, if this is an area that we need to start to look at as a community is, is to be able to continuously deploy OpenStack from master and, um, you know, identify um, periods where there would be disruption, whether it's a database upgrade, that, that kind of thing. Sure, so, so I think that, that I, I from a theming perspective, I would put that under stability. Um, more directly, we, we have a set of user stories that we're tracking on GitHub, uh, and that is one of the user stories we're tracking on how do we, how do we make um, upgrades work better. Okay, stability would, would typically, at least my understanding would be, um, does it continue to does it continue to run? Whereas right. this is really about deployment and being able to, to sure. continuously upgrade. So. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I understand the question. And as I said, we do have a user story we're tracking about continuous upgrades. From a, th I, you know, this is one of those things. What's the difference between a use case and a theme? In this case, you know, themes you need to have stability so that when you do those upgrades, things don't break. I think that's part of it. But but, but I appreciate that. Anyone else? Oop. Okay, so I, uh, this is the second question, what about other themes? So yeah, we can take back and see how, make it more explicit that we're tracking things like upgradability um, and map it into one of these themes to make that, to make that more explicit. Okay, and that I'll turn it over to, oh, there's another one. Sorry, I know you're blinded by the light. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the themes it's I'd like song. to see more work on is getting rid of cruft in our code. Like okay. untested configura configuration options, some of which have been there for, hmm. you know, since B or C release and actually don't work. Okay. Um, we've certainly run into some in Cinda from when we split out in Nova. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some in Nova that have never worked. I know there's some in, uh, there were some in Swift that have mostly been fixed that have never worked. Okay. And I know I occasionally get support requests about, you know, oh, I tried to flick this, tw twiddle this configuration option and it doesn't work. And you look at it and it's like, no, that looks like it's never worked. Okay. But there's never any, I mean, getting resources to go through and clean up cross and things or improve testing of, of configuration options or whatever is incredibly difficult from a, an organizational point of view because there's no obvious win from it. We've got a configuration okay. that works, why do we care about other configurations kind of thing? Yeah, and that's a fair point. And I, I, I would argue that that actually starts to fall under things like stability because if you've got code in there that's not being tested that may not work, uh, that's that's yeah, an accident waiting to be happened. Theme, though, is not actually making a statement yeah. because unless, yeah. you, unless you actually break these things down into what we want to fix, sure, you're you're wasting your, you know, so, every, everybody wants stability, but what does that mean? So so and that, and and we do that. So thanks for for making the clarification. What I was trying to get at was, is that a that's a fair point. So we can we'll, we'll take that back as to whether that's something that we can track as a separate discussion point or whether it's something we just make explicit as part of one of these themes. That's a fair point. Let me try to can turn on. Uh, so Duncan, let me try to answer that. So the themes are basically uh, the place where we can aggregate multiple different user stories. So the flow, uh, which I will not get in today, but uh, it's on the roadmap as part of the roadmap presentation tomorrow, is that uh, we create uh, a user story. 
from the user story, uh, you know, there is some level of the rationalization going on, uh, prioritization, you know, all of the user stories kind of map, map to the themes, and then uh, the group uh, votes on them. It's actually open to everybody, but uh, usually very few people outside the product working group uh, bother to vote on that. And then from that, we start creating the uh, cross themes uh, 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 blueprints or specs. Uh, again, based upon the prioritization. From there, kind of the next step down, we start creating the blueprints for individual projects which are all combined together to satisfy that user story. And that allows us kind of two things. It allows us to, uh, and then, you know, we as a product working group, since uh, majority of the developers, one way or another, uh, are part of the organization we belong to. They work for the same company, so the product working group de facto trying to prioritize things for them allows us to get there. So there is a lot of uh, you know, discussion of how we can put more resources behind them and what are the, you know, the right priorities. Uh, again, the main goal, one of the biggest goal for the product working group was trying to help uh, the PTLs to identify the priorities versus everybody is trying to hit them and saying, please do this for us. Here's a blueprint, yeah, here's half a person to work on that, but we need more. I'm not 100% sure if it answered your question, but uh, I think this would be a great user story. Uh, so I would uh, encourage you to submit the user story uh, to the product working group and then we'll drive it uh, as part of the overall, uh, o you know, as overall uh, portfolio or user stories. So one thing which uh, became uh, uh, somewhat obvious to us once we start looking into uh, the more details of the themes, is that some things, uh, some things uh, are very tied together to the user role, to the role which uh, the person is trying to do. They're not as much tied together, interestingly enough, to the use cases. So the same, you know, for enterprise working group versus for, uh, for example, for NFV, for cloud native application and so on, all of them have similar kind of experience and similar kind of requirements but uh, the requirements seem to be uh, more targeted uh, to the role of the uh, person uh, playing in the organization. So uh, we kind of collaborated with a, a user working group uh, and there is a wiki pointer to that to create uh, some of the roles which we are identified. Um, actually, this is a small subset of the roles which people identified. Um, and we tried to kind of come up the definition. And the, one of the main thing is that, uh, you know, we realize that even from the, you know, manageability or for some of the other features, uh, the requirements are very different based upon your role. Uh, so we come up with, uh, you know, kind of extracted five roles out of that. Uh, uh, you know, we have, as, as, as expected, everybody on the working group had different ideas, you know, is it, is it the right number? Uh, you know, what are the other things we should, you know, do? Should we break one of those roles into the separate, sub you know, into the separate things? Uh, so the, the kind of probably the most uh, discussed was the user, uh, end user, and that's kind of fall into somewhat broad category. It kind of falls on the people who develop the application, but also it falls on the people who are kind of running the application, managing the application and, uh, uh, in, in operation. Uh, Again, they're kind of targeted to the specific application domain. So the second role uh, was kind of not straightforward came, in, come, came out, uh, but basically uh, for every tenant, there is de facto a person who is setting up uh, the, uh, you know, the boundaries of what the users within their organization can do. Uh, it could be department, could be company, it could be a small group of people, it doesn't really matter, but somebody is setting up the quotas, somebody is setting up the policy. And that's primarily such that the resources will not be abused. Uh, so somebody will not gonna go and uh, you know, spend a hell out of, uh, uh, generate a, a hell out of the expenses which somebody will have to pay later. <laughs> uh, 
so their kind of uh, counterpart, uh, you know, the person they are mostly common associated with is a cloud operator. Uh, and that's basically the role of the person who kind of runs day-to-day -day operation of the cloud and they're kind of supporting tenants directly. Uh, the cloud provider was kind of a strange role, at least a lot of us kind of could not really tease it out properly. And that is basically the person who is running the cloud as a business. <laughs> You know, the cloud operator de facto works for them to make sure it's operational, but from the business point of view, it's a cloud provider who is providing the thing and they are, you know, integrating with a tenant operator to ensure that uh, their SLAs uh, are properly, you know, uh, created so the cloud operators can provide them. Uh, those are kind of more kind of straighter roles. Uh, the infrastructure architect uh, has, uh, again, a couple of different uh, views on that. So the most simple one, you know, here is a person who creates a company, uh, the company cloud, especially for the private cloud, this is a really fairly well-defined role. Uh, they're the kind of the person who decides how the cloud will be built, what are all of the components of the cloud, uh, and, you know, how, how it will be, you know, scalable in the future and so on. Uh, Notice that this kind of role, you know, if you go to public cloud, kind of disappears. <laughs> or at least it's not, you know, not visible uh, as part of this role. Uh, finally, which was probably the most controversial role, uh, uh, but uh, well identified, is that when you have a problem with a specific uh, project within the OpenStack as a training, uh, you know, you need really an expert uh, to identify and help you uh, figure out what to do about it. Uh, it may be, you know, side effect of the maturity of the, you know, current open stack, uh, but, you know, when everything else fails, every, you know, falls back to the, to the developer who knows the code well enough to help out to understand how to remedy the problem. Um, so, as before, it's, uh, you know, open mic. Uh, so, we would like to hear more about your, uh, you know, feedback. Uh, do those uh, roles make sense? Are we missing the roles? Or there is a kind of relationship between the roles and the themes, uh, which uh, we try to identify here. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe we need to tear them down a little bit or maybe reorganize them differently. So any feedback you have on that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, for more details, uh, that's uh, Vicky uh, for the OpenStack uh, where all the personas are defined. So uh, kind of going back to uh, integration between the themes and the roles, uh, there is, uh, you know, they're kind of orthogonal to each other. Uh, but uh, there is something which we can easily tease out of that, uh, as uh, Pete mentioned. Security uh, kind of percolates uh, for all of the roles, but what type of the security and what the underlying requirements and where they're implemented would be different based upon the role. So when we create user stories, uh, you know, for the security, they probably have a, a role specific components in that. So for us, this kind of information is very useful because that goes back to how we organized our user stories and you know, what kind of thing we would like to create in a template so when we are creating, uh, creating uh, user stories, we can identify what are the things needed to be defined to help us understand what the impact uh, will have. So uh, any Feedback on that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, you can do it here, or if you're shy, of course, email, as uh, Pete mentioned, is always a great way of uh, handling that. Uh, and, you know, it's on the wiki, so you can comment on the wiki directly. Okay. Hearing none, I'll move forward a little bit. Um, so, when we did the first time uh, presentation Mitaka, we kind of looked at all of the project uh, within uh, the OpenStack, uh, partially based upon their maturity, partially based upon you know how many resources we as a project working group have, 
and kind of start working on them. So uh, in this cycle, uh, you know, we kind of matured from what we uh, initial um, 19 uh, project which we were uh, tracking and creating the user stories for, uh, well, creating the blueprints based upon the user stories for to much larger, uh, much larger set. Uh, we are now to 28. And some of the things uh, you might think are a little bit outside of the scope, what we should be concerned ourselves. For example, uh, the you know, QA or stable releases, they're not really projects per se, but they're impacted, uh, you know, the work we, we are doing or the requirements we're driving impacting them. So uh, that's you know, why we start bringing some of them into the, uh, into the espaces of us uh, when we are generating the user stories and work uh, based upon them. So I'll give you a little bit of a teaser uh, of uh, what would be the preview at the roadmap because this is not a full roadmap discussion. This is the themes which drive the roadmaps. Uh, so again, based uh, upon the themes we identified and uh, the project which we are uh, tracking, which is just a small subset of that here, we identified which of the functionality uh, in each of the release uh, we are driving. So needless to say, Nova is to nobody's surprise is impacted uh, on almost every release but with all of the things, uh, except probably modularity. Uh, but as you can see, not every project have, you know, for example, work on interoperability on some of the other stuff. Again, some of that is basically a level of the maturity and if they uh, reach the point where they need to address those issues or there's some other stuff need to be addressed. But by combining all of that information together, we create uh, the view for the users to identify, you know, where, what from the function, you know, the high level functionality point of view, where is, uh, you know, what's the current snapshot of the, uh, of the maturity of the overall solution. And then, for each of the projects, we have a more detailed view where which, you know, right now we automatically generate, we created a tool for that, where we are seeing uh, what are the functionality based upon the blueprints uh, within each of the uh, project associated with uh, uh, theme is being done in each release. Uh, we actually, uh, you know, if you go to the roadmap uh, discussion tomorrow, you will see the, the tool which automatically kind of goes through each layer at a time from the, uh, the user story to the cross-functional spec to the blueprints uh, within each of the stories, uh, visit, 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 uh, within each of the project, and within the project, even the submission, which are specifically associated with them. So we have the full you know, vertical view of the everything which needs to be done and you know, what the current status is with respect to individual user story for individual thing. So I'll stop. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give the plug-in to the presentation tomorrow for the roadmap for other brethren and the product working group. Uh, and we would like to uh, open the mic for a discussion on any of the uh, you know, open questions which we hope to get some feedback on uh, from the themes themselves, uh, you know, how you would like to see them progress forward from the roles uh, and you know, which roles or make more sense for you which ones you think we should get rid of and you know how to uh, progress that forward to which uh, you know the kind of higher level roadmap to drive the discussion forward. Again, I can't see anything since light is straight in my eyes. Okay. <laughs> Just a quick uh, uh, question. Is performance across uh, different components considered uh, a theme or how do you how do you think of performance? So, so what, what areas, I mean, because we were, one of the areas of performance we're trying to address is scalability, but is there some specific performance area you think is, is we're missing? There isn't a single definition, of course, I mean, different sure. components. So, sure. But different components, if they drive uh, their architecture, design implementations with performance in mind, that can become a theme. Okay. And uh, sort of one way to think about 
uh, an important component going forward. Uh, you know, performance being an important uh, driver for, for architecture and innovation. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I mean, the closest that we have right now for the performance, if you can call that, is there is a rally project. Uh, so let's see if I can go back, which we, somewhere here. It's in the middle of the third yeah. column. Uh, uh, right. So that's a project we added uh, in the Newton time frame uh, for us to track. So Raleigh consists of kind of three pieces. Uh, so one piece is uh, ability to drive multiple different uh, OpenStack uh, deployments simultaneously and test them. So it actually uh, have ability to run multiple tests on different OpenStack environments and you know generate result and compare them. That's kind of more on the QA side, uh, even though it's as part of the Raleigh project. So the second part is a performance, uh, but again, it's performance very kind of narrowly ta tailored. It's not tailored to individual project. It's tailored of the user experience on a couple of the, you know, I would call prototypical applications. Uh, again, most, uh, actually all of those applications I'm aware of right now are uh, cloud, uh, you know, uh, cloud scaled applications. I mean, they're not enterprise or NFV, they're, you know, kind of cloud targeted ones. Um, so that's one, I again, that's not, it's not gonna stress uh, or get the performance numbers for individual project, nor go through the, you know, is the design for individual project, uh, you know, good enough, nor have any measure for that. So I'm not even 100% sure if the, that level of the benchmarking and the performance would be applicable uh, to that theme because it's kind of very targeted for one role. <laughs> um, so yeah, it sounds like a useful thing to do. I, you know, useful theme. I'm just trying to understand how to target that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, we had one customer that when we were talking to them, they gave us, you know, a target that said, okay, I need to be, need to be able to set up X number of VMs in a, in a finite period of time because that affects their scalability. In other words, you know, how big, so again, I, t t that's why I kind of map it and say performance at some level limits how, fa how big you can make things. Um, and, and, and we ran into some issues with cinder drivers taking too long. It was actually slowing it down, so we had to go work with another partner to help them clean up their cinder driver. Um, so we are, I mean, clearly that's an issue that we look at, so this question of how do you, how do you lump them into themes, that's, that's another one. So that's the, a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. So I, I heard performance, I heard clean up the cruft, and I can't remember, what was the, the third one? Oh, it was um, uh, keeping it up when you need to do continuous CD, integration. Continuous, continuous, integration. continuous deployment. So are there any other big misses that you think we've, we've got right now? Because I think we're about out of time. So if, oh, please. This morning there was an interesting presentation on uh, backups and sort of data safety. Okay. And it seems to be a little bit of an elephant in the room as much as, well, very often clouds are perceived to be, you know, uh, ephemeral and, well, we can just throw away the data. But if you're going to be running any sort of, <laughs> you know, important application on your cloud that go ahead go ahead say go ahead and say i'm going to run pets on my cloud <laughs> it's okay kind of i mean <laughs> you know uh, i'm just looking at this uh, at this dashboard here and i i, I can't see it here i, I know okay. there's a number of uh, up and coming projects um where, where does that fit so so i know that i know that um for example there's a cinder backup so cinder in itself is addressing backups um, has that one yeah, I'm not sure about Manila if they're doing anything specific. Um, so that's a good point. We can yeah. We can track so there is a well. couple of things there. So there is one which is part of the Swift because Swift actually can be configured to be multi um, kind of site and actually yep. you know you can back it up you know the ability to go asynchronously to a different area. Uh, and as long as your kind of Cinder and uh, Glance images are all you know using that as a back end irrespective of what the actual implementation of the Swift is, uh, then it kind of gives you a little bit of that. But it does not provide you a very clean API to, on the user point of view, uh, 
uh, for example, to do it on the application. You know, you can do it per VM, sure. You can do it per image, sure. Uh, does it allow you to do kind of consistent snapshot of the application? No. Yeah. Uh, and you can but conceptually try to write a you know, hit template to capture that, but there is no plugins for that. Yes. Very good point that was made this morning as well is that, well, you know, I mean, basically having something stable that you can perhaps replay over time, that probably also includes infrastructure level configuration, um, you know, your, your flavors, whatnot. I mean, it seems like it's a, it's a bit of a cross-cutting concern. And and I think what you said is that it's, it's well, it's it's addressed in places. It seems like a bit of a hodgepodge thing. And yeah, right. It's, it's quite right. Exactly. Point. So four points. Excellent. Okay. So we have four. Okay. Good. Oh. Product. Sorry, can I just say to that, the project Smorg is trying to address that and trying to pull all of the bits that are your application and drive all of the individual backup bits under that. It sounds like it's trying to do what you want. I'm sure they'd like to hear why they're failing and what they more they need to do. <laughs> they're, they're actually a very responsive team. So Smorg. Smorg. Yeah. yeah, so small games to drive things like Freezer. You know, it, it's, it's a top level orchestration. It doesn't do any backup itself. It just goes and grabs information and remembers where everything is and will take your application apart and find, discover all the bits of it and tell you how to, and tell you how to back up all those bits individually and then drive that process. Right. Thank Thanks. you very much, Duncan. So I think we're out of time, but thanks everyone for your attention. And as we said, if you've got more feedback, you know, the product working group uh, mailing list is a great place to hang out. Thanks everybody. Thanks.